Hi, hello, welcome. My name is Freya and I am a knitter and textile student living in Glasgow with my girlfriend and my two cats. Welcome if you're new, if you've come back, that's pretty cool. Um, so, I guess we'll just jump right in. That's not, I mean, that's an introduction enough, I think. What else is more to say about me? Um, I think we'll jump right into the knitting chat because I've got a lot to talk about. I have finished quite a lot. I feel like it's been, what has it been, like two and a half weeks maybe since my last one, something like that. Um, I have been doing, I say doing up, I've painted this room, this is my studio room. Um, I've painted this wall and that wall and the other two walls white. That took a while, it took a while to clean up as well put up one storage bookcase thing. I've got another one coming. So I am still surrounded by boxes of stuff. But at least the background's a lot nicer than just a white wall now. It's just a shame that this is so barren, but I, I've got so much stuff to fill up. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. So, and on that note, I feel like I um, ramble a little bit because I, I can talk about these things for so long, I think. So I have actually made some notes so that I do not go off piece and talk about things for so long. Um, yeah, so what have I been up to? There is maybe like four finished objects. Um, three whips and I have, <laughs> I have actually got some acquisitions which I'm just going to stop saying that um, I don't buy yarn because for the last couple of weeks I have been buying yarn um, and that is mainly because I'm getting a bit of money because of going back to college and SAS. So yeah. Let's just jump into my first finished object. Um, so I'm sure I first started this maybe on po podcast one, had I? Yeah, I can't remember. But anyway, this is the Olivia Summer Top by Threadalicious, if I remember that correctly. Note to self, put up a name of what this is because I'm sure I get like every name wrong. Um, anyway, this was a test knit, a test knit, and this was what my second test knit, I'm pretty sure. Maybe it was even my first. I don't know. I've been on some more holidays from college, so I sort of decided to throw my hat in the ring and try and get on get into some test knitting which I've been loving. I don't know how much more test knitting I'll be able to do because I do go back to college this week but I've absolutely but I've absolutely been loving it. I think it's so fun to sort of test the pattern that, that sounds so obvious but it's pretty cool to be a part of not the designing process but the pattern writing process. I mean not massively obviously because I've already written the pattern but finding tiny things that maybe a typo or like the smallest of things that's maybe not um, instructed clearly or something like that anyway not massive things but just tiny things um, and especially because I'm in I'm like a textile student I'm interested in going into the industry so it's pretty cool to have a taste of what it's like to be an independent designer I'm rambling. So this, Olivia Summer Top, this took way longer <laughs> than, not way longer than normal, the normal jumpers that I made, but because it was knit on such small needles on a small gauge compared to the ones that I knit. I mean, for example, like all the ranunculuses that I've made were made on a six millimeter needle and this was a 3.5 millimeter needle. Um, 
So it makes a big difference, obviously, because the smaller the needles, the smaller the gauge, the longer it takes. Luckily, this is a fitted um, garment. So it wasn't oversized, so I wasn't knitting crazy amounts of fabric, but it definitely took a wee while. And I love it. It's, I would be wearing it, but it's absolutely boiling today, especially in here because this side of the house gets the sun, so it gets baked, and it's not happening today. But I do really like this. I'll definitely be wearing it as a layer. Um, in autumn and probably winter as well around the house. Um, this is made out of West Yorkshire Spinners Ropey. I cannot remember the colourway name. I'll put it in the description. It is actually a baby yarn. I don't know. Can you tell that this is a baby yarn? I don't think you can. Oh, I have not washed and blocked this and I'm sure the um, stitches will come out, will relax and uh, lay nicer, I will say that. Um, yeah, so this is a baby yarn. Um, so I knew that it was going to be soft. Baby yarn's always soft, obviously. Um, as I was saying, I won't say too much. Um, as I was saying in the last one's um, episodes, <laughs> this is 50% Falkland wool, could be wrong, but 50% wool and 50% polyamide or some kind of um, plastic fibre. And last week I was like, I have never made a garment out of um, a knit between wool and acrylic or whatever. When I was literally sat in my <laughs> newly finished uh, jumper, the Simply Wave crop by Jean Fibre, made out of 75% wool and 25% polyamide. Um, yeah, I don't know why that didn't click for me, but actually I have made one garment before that was a mix. But anyway, this is, I mean, this is 50-50%, so it's got more man-made fibres in. And you just would not know, which I'm super surprised by, like, um, when you think of acrylic, or at least for me, I mean, when I think of acrylic, I think it's not got any drape, it's kind of stiff and it feels not very nice, but this you just would not know. Like, can you, you probably can't tell, but that drape, it's so bouncy and it's probably because it's like a knit pearl texture that makes it really bouncy and stretchy as well, which helps. But Oh, the drape is so nice on this, like, you just wouldn't expect that, at least I wouldn't, so, mm, I'd definitely recommend the yarn, I mean, it, it is baby yarn, but I've used baby yarn for quite a couple of things because I love things to be soft, and I'd love to say that I'm into proper, like, rustic yarns that aren't super wash treated, um, or made to be softer. And I can hack it for some things, but most of the time I do need like the softer, the softer yarns. And this is definitely soft. This is like on the skin, could wear without, with like very, very minimal irritation, which is pretty cool. So I definitely recommend it. Um, if you want to knit anything in fall play. I mean, obviously there's like, limited colours because people love or companies love to make baby hands and like pastels and that's it so <laughs> that's a bit annoying but anyway that's probably enough to say um yeah that's pretty much what to say I mean I've spoken about this a lot enough so moving on to what I'm wearing. This is a finished object that I finished so fast. Compared to the other one, that was knit in four ply, which is a thinner yarn than this one. This is knit in a DK weight yarn. For those who don't know, I'm sure that you will if you're watching this, but um, 
the yarn weights went going from like lace weight, four ply, DK, worsted, iron and chunky, super chunky or bulky or whatever. Um, so that was four ply and this is DK. Therefore, this took a lot less time than that. I mean, obviously it's a smaller garment. But um, after knitting something that took ages, it's just so nice to knit on something that uses bigger needles, a, a larger gauge and thicker wool. I don't know, just like, it's nice to have a mix of like slow burners and really, really fast, um, what's the word, like satisfaction. Like you get the finished project sooner, so it's, do you know what I'm talking about? It's like instant, not gratification, that is not the right word, but anyway, I'm sure you get the gist of what I'm saying. So, I will show it. <laughs> this is called Another Frilly Cami, and it is by Another Knit. Now I could be getting that wrong again, I am so bad with names, I swear. They just don't register with me. And that can come as quite rude, I think, but they just don't register to me. Anyway, against the point. This, I don't know if I said, but this is another test knit. Um, and I love test knitting this. Um, the group chat is so nice to a couple of people point, like, this yarn took, well, not forever, but this, some of the people already had yarn in their stash that they could use, so they started straight away. Um, but I had to order yarn, and obviously I had to wait like a week or whatever until it came. So other people had already started it, or some people had actually finished this, um, before I started knitting. So it was kind of cool to just be in the group chat and hear what other people had to say about the pattern, which was quite, um, what's the word? helpful <laughs> it was quite helpful to read that sort of stuff before i sat in it in the pattern because well there was one woman that um this was a new technique to me this frills uh if you don't know this is like well new to me like i said <laughs> but yeah this is really cool i would definitely recommend having a go at this technique not really sure what it's actually called but pleats pleats yeah pleats and this is a really cool technique um i don't really know how to describe it <laughs> basically you're making pleats it's basically a rib and then you like knit i can't describe it but definitely look at a YouTube tutorial or something like that because it's pretty cool and I would definitely love to find other patterns that use it because it was so fun um, yeah I love frills at the moment <laughs> which is weird because I've never been into them but I love this um, so modifications that I made was I knit 3.5 centimeters more on the body and I decreased sooner on the cuffs, um, just so that the cuffs didn't go up too high, just so that they stopped sooner. Um, but that's pretty much it, and the pattern's really, written really nicely, and I would definitely recommend this pattern because it's so fast, and it's, you could like buy this in a shop and I'm pretty sure, it, well, I only used, I think it was like 110 grams of DK weight yarn and the ball of yarn that I bought was like £3.50 a ball, so all in like, you'd have to buy three balls, so that's like, what, 10, 10 11, 12 pounds for a top and I'm sure that you'd definitely pay more for this in a shop. Um, so that's cool how that works out. Um, I definitely recommend this as like a beginner, confident beginner pattern um, because you can, well, 
just because <laughs> just because it's a good part and it's easy and it's also small i feel like for beginners at least for me it's good to start small because then you get a garment quicker than if you were to make like a four ply oversized garment that has like color work and lace and all of this you get the finished project pro finished product much sooner which can like spur you on um to make another knitted object <laughs> yeah what else is to say about this that's pretty much oh what? the yarn that i actually knitted out of i'm so bad for that um so the yarn that i knitted this out of i'm pulling uh, pulling things up is the king coral merino blend dk i was looking for yarn and I really did not want to knit this in a solid. I don't know why. Well, her original version was not knit. Her original version was knitting Ching Fiber DK weight, I'm pretty sure. And that wasn't a solid. And I thought it just looks too good in like a variegated speckled whatever yarn to be knit in a solid. Just a personal preference. Um, and I was looking all over the place because I didn't really want to spend like what like 20 over 20 quid on <coughs> expensive hand dyed yarn so you know I was looking on more affordable yarns and normally more affordable yeah normally more affordable yarns are just solid colours like if you're wanting like a variegated more interesting more depth feathered heathered even yarn it's you're normally gonna have to pay a lot more money but back to this when I found this this was maybe three pound fifty a ball and my garment ended up being 110 grams these are 50 gram balls so all in all you'd have to, but i i knit the size medium so all in all you'd have to buy three balls and that's like just over 10 pounds for a garment have i already said this my memory is so bad anyway yes i have already said that yeah anyway affordable yarn and also not a solid like that's pretty cool they have in this range they have all of all of the colors in this range apart from two are solid colors there's this speckled yarn but it's kind of like tweedy but like bright colored tweedy which is cool there is this tweedy <laughs> yarn that is white with the tweeds and there's one that's black with the little tweeds in it but i went for this one because i think this one is nice <laughs> uh, yeah what is that? oh yeah this is like all of the other ones in this range is like 100 percent wool but this is 96 percent wool and four percent viscose and i'm sure that the four percent is the little nets of color so i'm happy with that in my opinion that is just 100 percent wool um yeah i love it um this is i mean it's soft and i'm i've not washed and blocked this um and i'm sure that it would get a lot softer after using like a wool a wash um but i could definitely definitely wear this against my skin and it wouldn't annoy me i wouldn't be thinking of oh that's uncomfortable or whatever I could just wear it and be comfortable um, and I'm sure that you could knit this pattern in like a cotton easily and it would be like perfect for summer I'm pretty happy unless it's like a heat wave <laughs> I'm pretty happy wearing wool <laughs> all year round I mean well apart from a couple of weeks or a month or whatever in Scotland you can wear wool. I mean, I wear wool every day. <laughs> so 
that does not bother me. Yeah, what else to say about this? Nothing really, apart from the fact that I love it. It was super fun being part of the testament. Um, really hope to do more testaments, but I'm going back to college, so it might not be possible. Anyway, that is that. So on to my next finished object. Yeah, my next finished object. So for the next two finished objects, I will be talking about presents. So again, if you are my family, <laughs> do not watch this. Do not watch this segment. Skip like maybe 20 minutes ahead just to be safe. I don't know how long I'm gonna talk about this, but um maybe I'll put a I'll put a timestamp to tell you when to skip to if I remember. Anyway, goodbye. <laughs> so my first gift knit finished objects. I had already finished one of the pair in the last episode, I do believe, <laughs> but I have finished a pair of scrappy socks. This is a men's size nine scrappy sock and I am hoping, like I was saying, I am hoping to knit um, a good couple of pairs. Everyone seems to be a size nine, <laughs> so a good couple of pairs and then come Christmas I can just allocate it to the person and yeah I'm pretty proud that um, I have started Christmas not so early go me uh, because I do really want to gift knits don't know why I just I just like gifting knits at Christmas I feel like Christmas is the perfect time to be given something knitted in wool <laughs> And socks are always a good, I mean, who doesn't like a pair of socks and who doesn't wear socks? I'm trying to think if I know anyone that doesn't wear socks, but I don't think I do. Anyway, yeah, this is a finished pair. I can't remember which one I finished last episode, but it doesn't really matter. Like I was saying on the other episode, I tried a different heel and by that I mean I knit my normal heel flap and gusset, which is what this heel is. When you knit the flap, you turn the heel and then you connect it all and work in the round again. <laughs> that was an awful description, but anyway. So normally I would knit this with the knit stitches on this side but I decided to flip it and have the pearl stitches on this side. I've seen other people do it and I was like well that looks fun I'll do that something new. I've knitted so many pair of, pairs of socks that you know jazz it up a bit do something new but I don't really like it. I mean it's fine but I won't be knitting it again which is a shame but yeah, I don't dislike it, <laughs> but no, I wouldn't be doing it again, I don't think. Uh, what else is to say about these? Nothing much. I mean, there's so many different um, brands of yarn in this. There's like Drops Fable, <laughs> Drops Fable, Drops Fable, Drops Fable, Drops Fable. You get the idea. Um, and Stylecraft Head Over Heels. This is a West Yorkshire Spinners this little bit here um yeah i don't know if there's any other brands in here actually but that's another pair another pair that is the first pair of christmas gift knit socks done yeah i spoke about that quite a lot in the last one so we'll move on to the next finished object the next finished gift knit object. Now I will get on to acquisitions, new wool stuff at the end but um, my auntie um, obviously gave, messaged me at my birthday and all that um, and she asked if I would 
light any more wool for my stash and of course I was like yes yes please <laughs> uh, she has really good taste in yarn so anyway she sent me a box of a couple of skeins and balls which I will show at the end because they are beautiful to say the least and she over the years she's given me quite a good couple of things to fuel my little knitting passion <laughs> um, and I'm pretty sure I got onto the topic once that she has struggled a bit to knit pairs of socks so I thought well she gave me some sock yarn and I thought I can't not knit her socks like it's been com like I've been meaning to knit her something for a couple of well a good while now and I thought socks are perfect, she gave me sock yarn and in fact she actually gave me sock yarn from this brand before and it is so soft, it's a beautiful yarn um, it is I can't even show you what they are these are the socks <laughs> these are the socks that I am going to gift to my auntie um, they're like fire. This is um, this is a ball, and this is a single ply, which means normally you have like twists of yarn, and there's like like four ply, four twists of yarn twisted together, but this is just one one twist. It's still a four ply weight, but it's only one. I'm describing that so badly, but it's only like one ply, but it's a four ply weight. Anyway, and that normally one plies, well one, they are actually um, less stable. They pill a bit more and yeah, they can be a less strong. But this is wool mixed with nylon and it is a sock yarn, like it's called Magic Sock. So, um, and I have actually knitted my a pair of socks in this yarn before and they're fine. I would recommend wash, being more careful when you wash a one ply yarn but apart from that like it's so soft. Um, I'll get the ball band off another one. This is Lang Yarns Jar Wool Magic Superwash socks I think um yeah you can't see it because of the white ball on it but this is 100 grams 400 meters 75% new wool 25% nylon so that is the composition of the sock yarn um I'm trying to get this back on the ball it's falling apart anyway so I do not know her sock, her shoe size. <laughs> I don't know her shoe size, so I had to guess. And actually, um, I was looking on some charts of like, you know how like when you buy socks in like a shop, you don't have like different socks for every single size of foot. You can buy like socks for size three to five and then socks for size six to nine, etc. And I was looking on a couple of the charts that are like knit a sock this length for sizes between six and nine, for example. So I just went with that. I was just like, fine, I'll knit um, safest option. I will knit a sock that fits size. I'm pretty sure it was actually size six to nine. My memory's awful, so it might not have been. So fingers crossed it fits. I knit this on a 2.5 needle I knit 64 stitches now for my foot and this is <laughs> this is after many many socks that I've knitted for myself I've sort of came up with the perfect recipe for to sock, socks that knit socks that fit my foot perfectly so I will knit 60 stitch on a 2.5 I will knit 60 stitches for the leg I will then knit 
18 rupees for the heel flat <laughs> and then I will decrease to 62 stitches for the foot and that fits my foot perfectly. I will still wear socks that have like 60 stitches for the foot or 64 stitches um, it just depends if you want a really tight fit or if you're happy having a loose fit. Um, I actually quite like having a loose fit for around the house but for the 62 it's like perfect in between so that's what I do with my foot but when I am gift knitting socks I will always err uh, on the size I will always err uh, on the side of caution um, because it's better to knit someone a sock that is too big than too small because they can always wear a sock that's too big but not wear a sock that's too small so I just knit straight up 64 stitches for the whole sock and that is like the recommended uh, sock stitch count that basically every simple sock pattern says to you so perfect I really really hope that they fit I have actually been waiting to send these um because I wanted to show them she didn't give me that rule that long, that long ago so <laughs> it's not too long to wait it'll be a nice surprise hopefully and hopefully they fit man if they don't I'll be gutted um but hopefully they will I did err on the side of caution so that is all of my finished objects. I feel like I, did I go through that fast? Maybe not. And looking at my notes, whips next. Whips, whips, whips. I have three whips, I'm pretty sure. One is actually crochet. I used, well, I say used to, but I crocheted a lot like as a kid and young teenager. Um, I got, I'm pretty sure I bought like a crochet book with my pocket money or whatever when I was like, oh no, I'm bad at guessing here, but like 11, something like that. And I was like obsessed with it. It was like a super simple patterns. I remember knitting a choker. I knitted, I'm going off piece here, but anyway, <laughs> yeah, I knitted a lot as a kid and young teenager and um, knitted a couple of blankets and then when I got into like, properly got into like the crafty, crafty, that's, I don't like calling that in crochet crafts, um, making stuff, <laughs> like, two years, two and one and a half years ago, um, I started again, mostly with crochet, because crochet, you can knit things faster, knit, make things faster. It's easier to like, this is gonna sound bad, but it's easier to like bodge, it's easier to like, just fix mistakes. Because you can, with knitting, when you rip back, you know, the, the, knit, the stitches are unstable, like they will just keep ripping. But with crochet, you can rip out a row and you've only got to worry about one stitch that will be unstable. So that's pretty cool. Um, anyway, I've not crocheted that much since like a year and a half ago because I just got into knitting. And for me, knitted garments are a lot nicer to wear than crocheted ones, but crochet is better for like objects, I guess, like around the house objects or amigurumi, like crocheting little animals or soft toys. Um, yeah. But I signed up for a crochet crochet test knit? No, test crochet. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, I signed up for a, another test crochet <laughs> and it is a bikini and I have actually knitted one like bra that, that was
would actually be like considered a bikini top before and um, I made up that pattern and I'm actually following a pattern for this one so it should turn out better and let me just show I um should putting out the patterns and sections and I mean it'll be easier that way to give feedback and stuff so um it's kind of clever to do that so <laughs> these look so funny by themselves but anyway the first <laughs> the first section she put out were the cups so I finished that um yeah there's not much else to say on that apart from that I finished the cups uh the pattern is like it's not like a set pattern it's like you put in your measurements and work around that and then you'll make like a perfect fit um yeah <laughs> anyway she put out the pattern for um the band <laughs> two days ago uh and i finished this test do you know what i actually finished this test night yesterday so <laughs> today this morning i thought right let's jump on it and let's start making, I'm tangled up with all of my other ones. Let's start making the band. And this is as far as I've gone. <laughs> it's literally just a row of double crochets. That's as far as I've gotten on that. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping to finish that pretty soon because I start college this week. Mm, and because it's on it's on a three millimeter needle, so it's pretty small. Um, it's a pretty small needle, so it will take a bit longer to finish. So I really hope I can finish it in time for the deadline. Yeah, I don't know how full on college is going to be in the first couple of weeks, so hopefully it's not too bad. But yeah, I'm getting on with that. Uh, what else to say? I mean, I'm not. This is obviously a branded yarn because all yarn is branded, but um, it's <laughs> I'm sure it's from yarn on a cone in mint green, but it's yarn on a cone. <laughs> I mean, they named it what it is, so I'm pretty sure. I mean, this will be for the knitting machine because you've got to use cones or capes on the knitting machine. And I have actually used it on my knitting machine, but it was perfect for this uh, test knit. And I'm striping it with another um, on the coin colour. Uh, I'll put up a picture of the original because it's that's really cool. <laughs> Pretty cool, the original. Um, nothing much to say on that yet because I've only finished the cup. I don't know if I will be brave enough to take pictures of myself in it and put it on the internet. We'll have to see when the time comes that I finish it. But yeah. So that's my first whip. Now my second whip. I showed on my last one I showed some yarn that my girlfriend got for my birthday. And I have not got the ball bands, but I'll show you it. I started it, um, I was getting the name wrong <laughs> for this pattern in the last one, as expected. But uh, I started the birds of a feather, not a feather and fan, what I was saying the last week. Birds of a feather shawl by Andrea Maori, I think. <laughs> Yeah, I started it and this oh, this is actually on a smaller cable needle, so I can't stretch it out too much. That is showing the colours a bit differently to what it is on in real life. Um, it's been scrumpled up on my couch next to me for a, for a while. <laughs> so it'll be nicer when it's been blocked, obviously, and washed. But this, I'm too scared to pick up the main colour, this uh, solid colour, I'm too <laughs> scared to pick up 
the cake, if you saw it in the last episode, it's a cake of absorbable flour, it's called. I'll put it in the description, obviously. But it's like a plate. A plate is like... A plate is like a cake. I don't really know how to describe it, but it's like... Instead of... Let me find... Instead of like a ball of wool that's wound like this, um, in a bowl that's quite stable. A cake of yarn is just round and round and round and round and round like that and a plate is like that but bigger so it's a bit more unstable and I am pulling from the middle of that cake which means obviously I'm knitting and it's using more yarn and um and it creates like a hole <laughs> obviously where I'm using the yarn it creates a hole so now it's like this with a hole in the middle so it's quite yeah I don't want to pick it up because I feel like it's going to collapse and go into a knot anyway <laughs> so that's the main colour that I'm using is absorbable flower which is a gradient I'm not sure if you can tell it's not the colour is not coming up very well but it starts like a a purple, it goes into blues, and now I'm just coming into the pink section here, you can see that. And this is the knit <laughs> with the mohair yarn in between. And this mohair yarn is the Rowan Kid Silk Mohair in the colour... I don't know what the colour is. Maybe it's like purplicious or something actually, I don't know, but I'll leave it in the description. Now, this is like the most expensive yarn <laughs> that I have ever used and man, you can tell the quality difference. It's pretty insane. Like, it's beautiful. <laughs> and I would like to say I just can't go back, but obviously for my budget, I will go back. But it is just so nice to knit a garment, or not a garment, but like a object, <laughs> I don't know, an accessory, whatever it is, in such good quality yarn, like, it's going to be beautiful. And like I was saying in the last one, I'm not that into shawls, like, I see so many people knitting so many shawls, and I'm like, eh, if I'm going to knit so much fabric I might as well knit it into a jumper but I have had this in my queue on Ravelry for for quite a while now I don't know why this is like the first shawl that I've seen that I was like yeah I'll spend a bit of time on that <laughs> um, and I, I got this wool and I was like that's perfect and then I bought the mohair to go with it and the mohair is good the mohair is the best quality mohair that I have used and you can definitely tell <laughs> that it's softer, it's just like a a soft pillow <laughs> and I definitely re recommend that mohair, it is like just under three times more expensive I'm sure or just over two times more expensive than the Drops Kid Silk mohair that I usually use but for this project I'm only using two balls of the mohair so actually it's all right I mean if I was knitting a big oversized jumper that uses like five six seven balls of it that's that's pretty insane price but for something reasonably small like this it's doable you know and I actually do think I mean obviously because it's paired with such a good quality yarn I, I just could not not buy a good quality to go uh, mohair to go with it so I'm really happy with this now this is knit on a size four millimeter which is only half a millimeter bigger than um that first Olivia summer top that I knitted um so it's going pretty slowly I mean I don't think you'd know because I've knit so much fabric um but a lot of hours have gone into this uh yeah the the pattern is amazing it's so well written you can memorize it really 
quickly. The only bits that you need to properly um, concentrate and read the pattern for every line is these little wavy bits. But I mean, that, that's pretty small compared to the rest. Oh, at the beginning, I don't... Shall I point it out? You can't see. I knit this mohair section. I knit an extra row repeat, which means it's a tiny bit thicker than the other ones. I was so close to ripping. But I, I got to like here after this section. I got to like here before I realized and I was like, oh, if I rip back, I've got to rip back so much knitting. Um, and I was like, nah, I'll just leave it. And I'm happy that I did because it means that I'm gonna get the finished object sooner. <laughs> I also, yeah, I also made, I also made a mistake in this, and where I should have knit, where I should have pulled a row, I knit, a, yeah, where I should have pulled a row, I knit a row, which kind of threw off the pattern a little bit. But I don't think you can tell. It's not crazy. It's not worth ripping out a couple of rows for. Let's just say that. Anyway, not really else, not really anything else to say about that apart from the fact that I'm about halfway and it's so much known, but I'm loving it, which is crazy because it's something that I put, or oh, I was always put off with with jewels that I thought I'll just get burnt out with it and it'll be put to the side. But I think it's because um, the wool is such good quality, it was a gift, it means a lot to me. It's going to be a sentimental object that will hopefully last for a lifetime. Um, but it's uh, motivation enough and I'm loving it, so I'm really excited to finish that. But at the same time, <laughs> I'll kind of be sad to not knit on it because it just feels nice to knit on. Um, yeah, so, again, <laughs> next, next object, uh, if your family is another present, so don't watch, skip over like five minutes or whatever, uh, it is the tiniest of wicks, <laughs> uh, work in progress, but Nevertheless, I have started. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of pathetic. That's kind of a pathetic um, uh, work in progress to show, but I have started. See, when I start college, when I'm on Zoom calls, I, I'm always knitting because you can knit like below the camera and nobody will know. Uh, and weirdly enough, it like helps me concentrate on the zoom I mean does that make sense no but for some reason it makes me focus more I guess it's because I'm quite bad at like dissociating and like leaving the room but with this you're kind of forced to be in the room and knit a couple of stitches and but at the same time I can knit socks like if I'm just doing plain knits around and around on the sock I don't necessarily have to look at look at the knitting. I can be looking at the <laughs> I'll be looking at the camera, and I can just be knitting away like this. So, this will be my college Zoom uh, project. Is knitting socks? I've knitted so many socks like that. I don't know if I should confess that, but there we go. <laughs> Yeah, that's my last bit. And now on to acquisitions. Um, <laughs> I've got quite a lot of acquisitions for thinking that I'm not an acquisitions gal. I will start off, because I spoke about it before, I will start off with the yarn that my auntie passed down to me. Um, and like I was saying, it's absolutely beautiful. Obviously this one she gave to me, which I knitted the socks for, so be you know for that one. She gave me this one, which is the same kind of yarn, the same brand. Oh, but look at that. That's the colourway. Now, I <laughs> have like um, put projects to these already, and I want to knit the 
Oh, Pero Fest by Ching Fiber. Ching Fiber are absolutely bringing it out with the patterns at the moment. I don't know what it is, but they have just gone crazy with the new patterns and they're all beautiful. And when I saw this, it's like the perfect amount of yarn to knit it and it's like I'm living for the non-solids at the moment and apparently I'm really liking the one ply <laughs> the one ply yarns this is a one ply the main colour for my shawl is a one ply I think you can get much more beautiful colours with the one ply I don't really know why that is but yeah look how beautiful that is really into that kind of stuff at the moment so the, she gave me these two which is the same colorway and these are actually the same yarn and colorway that i knit my simply wave crop in uh, and i got i got that yarn from her again and because that top only needed like 100 grams these are 100 gram balls so there's 200 grams here and I must have like maybe just under 200 grams left from the wool that I used for it. the Simply Wave crop. I can't remember that. <laughs> so all together, I now have enough to make like a fully blown garment out of all of them. So I will definitely, definitely be looking out for a jumper or maybe even another shawl who knows um to use this yarn because this is really nice yarn on the last when i was talking about this last time i was like i couldn't find this anywhere online but i googled it again and you can definitely find this online it's constagan yarn i found this on Yuto hobby um it's got a sticker on it, but you kind of get the gist of what it is. This is actually a wool superwash and nylon blend. 75% wool, 25% nylon. 100 grams is 420 meters, so it's a four ply. Um, and it'll be strong and it's soft because it's superwash wool, which is treated, which makes it softer. Um, and because it's got the nylon blend, it's going to be strong, so it should, it should be hard wearing. Even though it's a one ply, it should be hard wearing. So, yeah, I'm excited to find a perfect project with that. Um, and I got a, another colourway. This is the same yarn, the Kunstigan yarn. <laughs> Kunstigan yarn. Uh, but in a different colourway, obviously. I mean, oh. Oh. I could definitely squeeze another Simply Wave crop out of this, which is so tempting. It's so tempting. But at the same time, like, no, hold back. Find a different pattern. <laughs> and there are definitely so many patterns that you can make out of 420 meters. So I would definitely be on the lookout again for a perfect project for that. Um, yeah, uh, so there were two, two other balls, <laughs> two other balls. <laughs> this is Pure Gotland DK. <gasps> Does that not look so fancy? This is by Bakery Yarn. It is 100% Pure Gotland wool. Um, Woolen spun, worsted spun, I don't know what else is to say. Yeah, it's 50 grams. Now, what can I do with this? I can definitely wait and if I'm gonna, and I do plan on making like um, a rustic, uh, classic um, colour work jumper. Um, and I could definitely use this as a, like, uh, a colour in the colour work. 
so I will probably wait and use it for something like that. I will definitely have to find another gown to pair with this. I, I'm sure that you can still buy this yarn. I've heard of bakery yarn. Um, maybe I could get a different contrast colour and make like really, really warm gloves or mittens or something like that. That's definitely doable with these. Uh, if I had that much. Um, this is British wool, made in Cornwall. That's pretty cool. So I'm excited to find one, find something to fit that. And finally, she gave me, I don't know, what is it? Four Fly Shetland Lambs Wool. What does that say? Aldi Gang? Yeah, this is a four ply. Uh, it's not super wash, it's like proper, proper woolly wool, but it is, I mean it's lamb's wool so it's soft, even though it's like a rustic wool, it's soft, so that's cool, um, and actually, this is 50 grams, so 225 meters, oh, and I kind of want to knit, like, not, would it be traditional? I don't, I don't know how to describe it, but like wrist warmer mittens, things that are like warm, rustic looking with like cables or like something like that would look. And I could definitely squeeze that out of that ball. Um, and for, that would that would suit that wool. That would really suit that wool. Um, so yeah. That's what she gave me, and I'm kind of in love with it all. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Anyway, so what I bought, <laughs> spoiled myself. Like I was saying in the last episode of what I want to knit going forward, which is quite a lot, I was saying how I wanted to knit this particular jumper, which I found. I actually found on Pinterest that it was on in a pom pom magazine in 2013. I managed to find the pattern on Ravelry. Not many people have knit it. Like there's not many um, projects made out of it. And I don't know why, because it's beautiful. And like I was saying on the last one, I'll put a picture somewhere of it. Um, it was made out of this like sage green color and I don't usually look at a pattern and go, I want to recreate that completely, like use the same colour yarn. But I seen this one and I was like, I actually can't think of another colour that would make that pattern look as good as what they've made it. So I've low-key been searching the internet for the perfect colour um, to match that and I can't afford to buy so much wool so much mohair, um, like hand dyed mohair. I'm sure there was like a mohair on chain fiber that was basically the same color, but I mean, that's ridiculously expensive for me. So that was a no go. And like things like um, drops uh, mohair, couldn't find a perfect match on that. Rowan couldn't find that. Um, what are the other ones that are on like Wool Warehouse and Lovecraft? I couldn't find colour on there, but I got to, I mean, I looked on all the little independent um, online shops from the UK. I couldn't find anything on them. And then I looked on Rito Hobby and I'm sure they're in the Netherlands actually. And I actually, <laughs> they are, they're, they're the people that I found this yarn for. They do like yarns that you can't really get over here, but they post it to the UK. Uh, there's quite a lot of yarn on there that I want, but I managed to find the perfect color of mohair. And let me tell you, this took hours of searching to get the perfect color match. I hope this comes up because the lighting in here is a bit weird, but no. No, it's not going to show it. It's, that's heartbreaking. I'll leave the link, but this, if I put it side to side, 
the picture of the actual like the designer's one <laughs> trust and believe that this is the same color as that it's just not really showing it properly but oh my gosh i was so excited to find this but i just had to get it because i am definitely making this like i was saying i don't really like to buy wool for projects too far in advance because well just in case i don't knit it or i sort of fall out of love with that color or other patterns get in the way and that gets pushed back and back and back and you kind of lose the love for it but i am planning to cast this on as soon as i finish the shawl as soon as i finish that shawl and that bikini test knit this it's going to take over my life and I'm so excited to knit that. I'm so excited to have that final object. But at the same time, it's not on quite small needles. It's knit on four millimetres, I'm sure, which is the same as that shawl. And it's really over, like really oversized. So it will definitely take a long time. But the more and more I knit, the less and less angry I am at the fact that things take so long because you kind of learn to just love the process. At the beginning um, it's pretty easy to be in it for the final product but um, but now I've gotten to a place where my patience is well and truly exercised <laughs> and um, I feel as if I can take on projects that take longer to finish basically and this was not cheap yeah and like I'm sure that altogether I got six balls and altogether I'm sure this cost like 46 pounds which is like the most that I've spent on a garment but like I was saying um I absolutely love that pattern and it's going to take me a while to finish so it'll take if I knit like in the same time I could knit like what like <laughs> three or four of these and that would equate to more money than it took me to knit this so it's kind of keeping me amused and occupied for long enough to um what's the word to not make to make it okay I can't think of the word but to sort of yeah make it okay that I've spent so much money on this and I know that I will wear that jumper so much like so much I absolutely love it and I cannot wait to cast that on anyway moving on moving on to <laughs> my next yeah my next purchase this is from that was from Rito hobby like i was saying and this one is from wool warehouse now so this escapade this this shopping shop <laughs> started because i needed yarn for this and i found the perfect one on there and then i was like well if i'm on there i might as well um make I, I might as well buy other stuff because i was in need of well i threw in another <laughs> yeah i threw in another drop sleeve because i ran out of this color and this color way is really good for stripey because you can use this as a stripe in the same sock this is a stripe in the same sock and this is a stripe in the same sock if you know what i mean so it goes a long way and it's like patterned so it's more interesting and I was running out of that well I had run out of that actually so I needed that back <laughs> it's one of my favorites to use in scrappy socks actually but so by this time the chin fiber had put out the um that vest pattern that I will put a picture of um uh, that I am going to hopefully, if I don't find another yarn that I prefer, I'm hopefully going to knit out this yarn. And for that pattern, you do you use two different kinds of yarns, 
you this yarn and you held, hold two strands of mohair together for the other yarn and I got this one that is not right that is not showing how beautiful this mohair is this mohair is the most beautiful mohair I have laid my hands on like I will leave the um link below even like the picture online does not show how beautiful this is it's like this is the i should say this is the rowan um kids silk haze vintage this was actually on offer so that kind of spurred my purchase but oh my god it's like really hard to find non-solid mohair colours that aren't like hand dyed and this is like so beautiful it's so beautiful and when i got it i was like i think they go well um well together as a sort of contrast going together thing I'll, obviously i'll put a picture so you can see it a bit better but um i got this and i'm like or is that too good to have it kind of go feel a bit lost because I'm mixing it together with a different yarn and I've got three balls which is 75 grams which isn't which is enough to make a, renun a long sleeve ranunculus I will not be making a ranunculus out of this I've knitted far too many but suffice to say that this is enough to knit a an open like a, it's enough to knit a long sleeve jumper if you use a big enough needle so I'm kind of like oh should I make something out should I make something else out of this yarn that would showcase it for its beauty and I cannot decide what to do I mean the yarn will always be for sale well, hopefully the yarn will always be on there for me to buy but I don't know why I'm in two minds. I'm in two minds, but whatever I make out of it, I will love. I think that is everything. I've there is actually more to talk about, but is it going is it a bit crazy? I can see that I've been talking for like almost an hour and ten minutes. And is it crazy to keep talking? Probably, but I'm going to because I have more to show. Now, not wool, but knitting related and it is behind me. Oh my gosh. I have not uh, screwed that to the wall. Um, <laughs> now, these are knitting books and if you're not interested, then I will say goodbye, but um, if you are, I bought this, which is just um, a colour book full of colour pairings. I got this um, a book from my auntie that's got some pretty cool um, designs in, which is nice to look through. Oh my god. And, oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you will know this book because it is basically famous at the moment it uh, it's this book it's the 52 weeks of socks from lane magazine um, and it is a collection of i mean the photography and the um aesthetic is just absolutely beautiful in this book and not only is it like aesthetically pleasing the patterns in it like are absolutely gorgeous there's so many that i want to knit out of this i mean like look at that <laughs> there's like what like 15 designs in here that i'm like i will knit i will knit this now funnily enough 
I have not knitted like pattern socks really my second pair of socks I ever knitted and I must have been like 14, 15 maybe had like a tiny <laughs> lace de detail right at the top of the sock and that's as far as that that's as much as I've done with lace knitting on socks but I mean I've done lace knit easy lace knitting on other things and I think it will definitely be doable for these um definitely so yeah I'm just really excited to sink my teeth into like like a more challenging pair of socks and there are definitely challenging socks in here so I'm really excited about that really really excited about that I don't know where I'll get all the time to make these but I will definitely make time oh one second that was an Amazon delivery of course but like I was saying I will definitely make time definitely make time to make these and I'm sure that some people might get lovely patterned knitted socks for Christmas which will be quite painful to let go of because I'm sure that they will take quite a lot more time than just a plain vanilla sock would take um, but they're just too beautiful anyway uh, the next two books that I got are both Vogue knitting books I have been saying <laughs> that I wanted this Vogue knitting book for the longest time it's definitely an investment um, but it's got like everything in it's got like <laughs> it's got like 10 different techniques to do one thing like I'm sure they've got like 15 different ways to cast on and stuff like that um, and I definitely I mean in down the line in my dreams I would add absolutely love to design I would love to make knitting patterns um, and this book is just like perfect for that because I can go right what is the perfect cast on for this particular project or like what which one would work the best for this sleeve for this neckline to cast off blah 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 blah, blah. and it's got everything in here it's got everything and I could just reference this and be like that's what I need to do I quickly like I mean it's big so much information but I quickly skim read this and I came across a join um when you join two yarns together um you know you finish one ball of yarn and you've got to add in a new one to, to kind of, to keep knitting I found a new way of joining yarns which is called the Russian join. Now I have never heard anyone talk about this and I do not know why because oh my gosh it's amazing. I will put in a picture because I can't find it, I mean that book's massive, but I will put in a diagram of what it is and I'm sure it will change your life. I, I've used it twice now. I actually used it in mohair i used it in mohair i can't remember what project it was now but yeah and it was fiddly don't get me wrong but you just i honestly could not tell you where i joined the yarn like it's invisible um hopefully you'll understand by the diagram that i showed but I can't describe it but it's like invisible I actually used it on this too now this is a bulkier yarn I don't know well I didn't know how well it would work in a bulkier yarn um but because this has like little nips of like different colors um I just took the risk because like, I don't think you'll be able to see it because there's a lot of other things to distract you and you definitely can't um I would be hard pressed to try and find that join and you know it is so nice 
to just not have to worry about finishing a project and having to weave an end. I don't particularly mind weaving an end um, now, but weaving an end in mohair, because mohair is quite see-through, you can really see where you've um, sewn in the yarn and with this join you just can't. I've talked about this join for quite a long time now, but it's really good. You should definitely look at it. Um, anyway, <laughs> and I am starting college and obviously I love knitting and I want to, um, I want to centre every project um, that I do at college on knitting. Uh, and a lot of the time, my inspiration for things with college comes from seeing um, a stitch pattern, like a different stitch, different texture, whatever it may be, um, and going, oh, I could do this with this, I could do it this way, and all of that. But I have not got any books that is like a stitch bible that has like every stitch ever. And I was looking and I was like, oh, there was actually quite a few and I didn't know which one was the best, but in the end, I decided that this one, which is another boy book, is the best one. Again, an investment for sure, but it has so many different stitches in it. I'm pretty sure all of these stitches come from all of the patterns that Vogue Knitting has ever done. So they're good stitches, do you know what I mean? It's got everything from like textures and it's laid, this is one of the reasons why I wanted this as well is because it's laid out really, really well. It's got good clear instructions, it's got good clear pictures too. And it's got like textures, it's got colour work, it's got lace, it's got things like brioche and so many different, it's got everything basically. Obviously it's not got every stitch ever, you could do with knitting because that would be like a crazy amount um but it's a good it's really good like i have <laughs> i have looked all the way through this and there's definitely a lot of inspiration a lot of inspiration so yeah i'm really excited to be saying college and that is where i will leave you thank you for watching like and subscribe and all that and I will see you next time, hopefully with my shawl finish, that jumper cast on, <laughs> and probably a lot of things cast on too. So thank you for watching 